The movie opens in the quiet town of Badger in northern Pennsylvania, where a small family is peacefully preparing for dinner. This serenity is abruptly shattered by a massive explosion outside their house. The blast is so powerful that it knocks the family unconscious. When they come to, they hear mysterious sounds outside their home and soon begin experiencing alarming symptoms. They struggle to breathe and one by one, they start coughing up blood. Tragically, each member of the family ultimately dies to these mysterious and deadly effects. The movie then shifts to a scene with Lauren, an exobiologist who is in her room when she hears news reports about the impact of climate change. This news deeply affects her, leading her to submerge herself in a bathtub with a glass of wine, her mind haunted by memories from her childhood. Shortly after, the narrative takes a turn as soldiers arrive at Lauren's residence. They urgently request her presence at the site of the explosion, emphasizing the need for her expertise. Reluctantly, Lauren agrees to go with them. Upon her arrival, Arrival at the explosion site, Lauren, along with an astrobiologist named David, is briefed by Colonel Emmerich. He explains that the source of the explosion and subsequent toxic gas was a meteorite. Strangely, the meteorite has disappeared, having dissolved into the ground. Colonel Emmerich implores Lauren and David to investigate the area and provide their professional insights. Colonel Emmerich expresses his trust in Lauren's abilities, citing her renowned reputation. He believes that if there is any extraterrestrial element involved in the incident, Lauren will be able to identify it. With a keen sense of purpose, Lauren and David proceed to the site of the meteorite crash. While David does not find anything unusual, Lauren's attention is drawn to a small red plant growing from the crater. She is intrigued by its presence and begins a detailed examination, intrigued by its unique characteristics. Upon returning home, Lauren's curiosity drives her to explore the dark web in search of information about similar incidents worldwide. She discovers that a comparable event occurred in Russia, where a similar meteorite released poisonous gases, causing numerous deaths. The Russian government, however, managed to suppress the information and destroyed the alien object. Despite an eyewitness interview, the mystery deepens as the woman who spoke out is found dead days later, adding a layer of intrigue and danger to the unfolding events of the movie. Soon after, two doctors are seen preparing for an autopsy on the father from the family who succumbed to the toxic air from the meteorite. As they examine the body, they note that his skin appears unusually normal for someone who has passed away, and the body lacks the typical stiffness of death. Upon making an incision, a bizarre, shiny black liquid emerges, only to be reabsorbed into the body. In a shocking turn of events, the deceased man suddenly sits upright, causing one of the doctors to flee in terror, while the other attempts to communicate with him. The man remains unresponsive and motionless, with his head bowed down. A check for a pulse reveals none, and his body is alarmingly cold. This phenomenon leaves Lauren and the observing scientists utterly perplexed. The situation escalates when everyone's phones start ringing simultaneously, signaling that numerous dead individuals from the town have mysteriously come back to life in a similar manner. The media erupts in chaos over these developments, and key figures from various government branches converge on the scene. Doctors attempt to elicit responses from the resurrected by showing them photographs of their families and homes, but these efforts prove fruitless. A government official queries why only 49 people have been reanimated when the death toll was over 1,300. A scientist speculates that only those who were in proximity to the meteorite crash site have risen. He suggests that they inhaled not just the toxic air, but also particles from the meteorite, which seem to be transforming their internal organs. During this conversation, one of the risen dead moves, a phenomenon the scientist notes as increasingly common. He reveals that all the resurrected individuals seem to be oriented in a specific direction. Lauren discusses the situation with Emmerich, drawing parallels to a similar incident in Russia. However, her reliance on information sourced from the dark web leads Emmerich to doubt her claims. At a White House meeting, it is disclosed that the resurrected exhibit no signs of heartbeat, respiration, or brain activity. Their organs and tissues contain unfamiliar elements and compounds, and their DNA has been fundamentally resequenced into a different life form, presumably of alien origin. A military general proposes incinerating the bodies, but Lauren reiterates her theory about the Russian cover-up, 
which is met with skepticism. The president, cautious about taking drastic measures, refrains from authorizing the incineration and instructs the scientists to conduct further research to understand these extraordinary occurrences. The narrative takes a personal turn for Lauren, the exobiologist. Overwhelmed by the extraordinary events unfolding around her, she seeks solace in alcohol, drinking heavily in her car. This moment of vulnerability triggers a flashback to her childhood, where she recalls her father taking her to a secret location and urging her to keep it a secret from everyone, including her mother. This memory, shrouded in mystery and suspicion, leaves her troubled, leading her to take a pill in an attempt to cope. Meanwhile, the efforts to communicate with the risen dead continue, yet all attempts remain fruitless. Lauren's frustration mounts as she desperately seeks any form of reaction from them. In a moment of desperation, she enters the room where the risen are kept and approaches a little girl among them. Lauren offers her a galaxy far beyond, a book that was a childhood favorite of hers. She shares a personal story with the girl, revealing that she didn't cry when her mother died when she was 10, an emotional response she acknowledges as abnormal. During this interaction, Lauren receives a phone call, and as she takes out her phone, the little girl notices the wallpaper, an image of the red plant from the meteorite crash site. To Lauren's astonishment, the girl suddenly grabs her arm. This unexpected reaction prompts Lauren to inform Emmerich that the girl responded to the image of the plant. David, another scientist, observes that all the risen dead are oriented towards the crash site, drawing a parallel to the sacred direction of Mecca for Muslims. The plot thickens when news emerges of a massive tree-like structure that has rapidly grown at the meteorite crash site within just two days. Lauren and David, arriving at the site, are astounded to see the once tiny plant has now transformed into a gigantic tree. This tree is not only altering the soil, but also the air around it, creating a toxic atmosphere for humans. Convinced that the Risen will react to the tree, Lauren persuades Colonel Emmerich to bring one of the Risen individuals to the site. At first, nothing happens when they place a Risen man in front of the tree. Then, in a startling development, the man takes a breath, opens his eyes, now a bright blue, and examines his body as if seeing it for the first time. He reveals that he is an alien and must stay near the tree to survive, as the regular Earth environment is incompatible with his existence. This revelation sheds light on the true nature of the Risen and the profound implications of the meteorite's impact, propelling the story into uncharted territory. Lauren then takes a significant step by holding a press conference to share her findings. She explains to the gathered reporters that just as plants on Earth produce oxygen vital for human life, the alien tree provides life-sustaining elements for the extraterrestrial beings. When questioned about how the aliens managed to reach Earth, Lauren mentions reports of wormholes near their solar system, suggesting a possible interstellar travel route. Back at her home, Lauren receives a message from her therapist who expresses a desire to discuss Lauren's recurring dreams of flying. During this reflective moment, Lauren's father pays her a visit. Their interaction is marked by awkwardness and emotional distance. Lauren's father reminisces about her childhood passion for science, recalling how she wanted a science lab for her birthday and used an old shed for her experiments. He mentions that Lauren's mother had been concerned about her daughter's intense interest in science and space. Despite his attempts to connect, Lauren maintains her distance, leading to his eventual departure. The military soon calls upon Lauren as the alien refuses to communicate with anyone but her. In a deep conversation, Lauren asks the alien about his purpose on Earth. He reveals that his home planet became uninhabitable, forcing his species to seek a new world. Intriguingly, he mentions that a human, identified as Supernova 94, provided them with detailed information about Earth, including human strengths and weaknesses. The situation escalates when David attempts to take a sample from the tree, provoking the alien's anger. The alien demands Lauren to stop them, but she is unable to intervene. She informs the alien about the military's plans to destroy the tree. The alien alien then demonstrates his hostile intent and extraordinary powers by controlling David's mind, causing chaos among the soldiers. This chaos turns deadly as the soldiers, driven insane by the alien's abilities, turn on each other. Meanwhile, the military launches an offensive against the tree and the alien, but their efforts are thwarted by an invisible force field protecting the tree. Reports of strange, ominous phenomena start emerging globally, with people hearing unnerving sounds from various natural sources. As Lauren watches news of world 
worldwide calamities, including dying crops, earthquakes, and terrifying sounds, humanity faces the threat of extinction. In response, the military decides to incinerate the victims, unwilling to risk further alien interaction. Amidst this apocalyptic scenario, Lauren decides to journey to the town where the meteorite crashed. She visits her childhood home one last time, finding her father sitting alone. Despite the imminent danger, Lauren experiences an unexpected sense of freedom as she embarks on her final journey, leaving her past behind. In the intense climax of the movie, Lauren arrives at the alien tree, immediately noticing its altered appearance, indicative of a transformation. The alien explains to Lauren that her presence has been instrumental in triggering these events. He reveals that Lauren was involved in an incident she has no recollection of, a revelation that begins to unlock her suppressed memories. Lauren's flashback takes her back to a secretive journey she made as a child, following her father's instructions to keep their destination a secret. Her father, a senator deeply involved in classified projects concerning extraterrestrial life at Area 51, was called in regarding an alien capture. Lauren, driven by curiosity, secretly followed her father inside the facility. In the flashback, Lauren learns that the alien was attempting to plant something on Earth and had the ability to fly. Overcome with curiosity, she enters the room where the alien's body is stored and touches the alien's pod. This contact triggers a mysterious process, transferring the alien's consciousness into Lauren. Back at home, Lauren's extraordinary scientific talents begin to manifest. She confides to her school teachers that she's an alien trying to return home. Her unconventional behavior leads to social isolation, and she spends countless hours in her shed, engrossed in scientific projects. Lauren constructs an advanced radio and begins sending messages into space, identifying herself as Supernova 94. This name, found on her calendar, reveals her true identity. When her mother discovers these communications, she forbids Lauren from using the shed, which incites a fierce reaction in Lauren. She covers the walls with drawings of wings, and a doctor informs her father that she possesses DNA from an unknown species, making her only half-human. In the present, the alien removes Lauren's helmet, revealing that she can now breathe the toxic air. The realization of her true identity and the source of her lifelong struggles brings Lauren to tears. Meanwhile, Lauren's father, overwhelmed by the revelation of her true nature, mourns the unfolding reality. Around the world, strange egg-shaped objects linked to the main tree appear, releasing smoke that transforms the atmosphere to suit the alien species, but proves lethal for humans. As humanity faces extinction, the planet undergoes a radical transformation. The movie concludes with the alien tree dominating the Earth. Lauren, finally accepting her identity, sprouts a wing, symbolizing her connection to the alien race. She acknowledges that she has found her true home, marking the end of a journey filled with discovery, transformation, and acceptance.